Um, shall I start? This is time, sir. Okay. So, good Ready? afternoon. Um, this is the very first talk of this call. The first speaker is Kentaro Mori from University of Tokyo. She will talk about um, top topological aspects of symmetry in low dimensions. Please start. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction and also thanks for the invitation. Uh, this is my great honor to give a lecture in, 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 this, in this winter school. So the title of this, oh, oh, do, do you see the mouse of, of the yeah, console? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so the, so the oh yeah, so first uh, this is the lecture note I, I, I put on my, on my website to be precise the GitHub. And I, I put the link to the, the chat. Um, so you can you can use as it is. This is uh, on web browser, or if you prefer, uh, from here you can also get the, the PDF version. Either either works. And I recommend if you can, I recommend you to op also open the the lecture note. This lecture note. Um, Alongside of, of I'm I'm going to switch to the bl the blackboard uh, style uh, lecture, but but I uh, also recommend to keep open this uh, website or PDF version uh, alongside and okay and and uh, so okay, let, let me first so so this is it and so yeah yeah. So yeah, this lecture note is is only halfway done. That only the first chapter is is written, and I'm going to write the, the second half. Um, okay, and it should be updated uh, accordingly. And the objective of this course is to to be an introduction to the field of symmetry and its anomaly in, in QFT, or to more generally some local systems. And it, uh, so the first part is it's on about uh, only about the quantum mechanics, and and in the second half, I, I intend to talk about the uh, one plus one dimensional QFT, two dimensional QFT. Okay, and yeah, that's my plan. And well, I'm afraid that I I, I use um, I mean for sure, say three quarter of the lecture using the quantum mechanics, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so pre request I suppose is pretty low that because that most of the part or at least half of the lecture is up is going to be about just the quantum mechanics. So uh, I assume that the, the basically for the first part, some basic knowledge about, uh, sorry, the, the other undergraduates level quantum mechanics uh, is enough. And, and for the latter part, I assume that you know about the uh, free scalar theory uh, on QFT, but, but nothing more than that, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also assumed some familiarity with some group theory, like yes, so three, yes, so two, or Z2, blah, blah. That's a prerequisite. request. And, and these are the references. Uh, so yeah, um, so I want to be very, uh, the, this lecture to be very grounded and uh, doesn't, don't, not uh, relying on some big hypothesis or something that the, rather than rather it, it, it should be understandable um, from every detail that that's my intention and but uh, um, yeah but for, for that reason I, I cannot go far uh, uh, yeah as I said I, I, I just going to talk about the quantum mechanics. In for most of the part. So, so for the more advanced, uh, so, so I, I don't ask you that you can, you can start with the research right after uh, hearing this lecture. And for more advanced stuff, I recommend that this three, uh, this, this one is a lecture notes um, by Yuji Tachikawa, he's my supervisor. Um, and and th these two, this is a lecture by Edward Witten, and this is a, another paper by Edward Witten, and uh, all of three are very, very, very good. 
very good uh, entry point to the field. So I, I encourage encourage you to uh, proceed if you if you like the topic to to this these uh, resources. Any any question about uh, so far? Okay, so then, then let me move on to the content. Okay, so, so I, I, I start first start the talking about motivation. Um, yeah, okay, so I, let me switch to my iPad. Okay, so so first I want to talk about motivation. Oh, oh. My motivation for this whole topic of symmetry and anomaly. Okay, so first first the message is that I, I want to convey is that the symmetry, the symmetry is very ancient concept. I mean, literally ancient, um, but also uh, also new, uh, new topic for to be precise, renowned topic. Thank you. In the formal research of QFT in in this year, now and and why? So so the last decade, there was a new understanding. Of of the quantum memory. Um, and also the generalization, generalization of symmetry. Okay. And Okay, and, and in this lecture, I, I'm not going to talk about the generalization at all. So, so I, I focus on, on the, the quantum memory. This is a, this lecture. And, and this, this part in particular, is is triggered by the condensed matter uh, the notion of symmetry protected topological phase uh, in condensed matter physics Okay, so, so, yeah, so, so the, the condensed matter physicist, um, uh, more, more specifically, Shagan Wen found the, uh, and, and his collaborators found the very, uh, very important notion of symmetry protected topological phase in, in their, in their context. And, and it turns out that it, it has, uh, it is in a, very close proximity to, to the quantum anomaly, very close related to quantum anomaly, even in QFT. So, and that triggers many researches, new understandings and new developments. And, and yeah, that's the, the situation. So yeah, so first, first uh, I, I would say that this is a hot topic, um, even though that the, it sounds very old. Okay. That was my first message. Then uh, 
let me let me say more um, concrete things. So why the quantum anomaly? Uh, is useful. Okay, and so I think maybe there are two um, ways of using the the quantum anomaly at least in, in, in the historically. And one is to constrain the models uh, the, the con constrain the um, gauge theory, sorry, possible gauge theory by gauge anomaly. So the example, the great example is standard standard model. Okay, so so if you have uh, studied the standard model of the particle physics. So this have a gauge gauge group or gauge algebra SU three uh, and and SU two and U one. Okay, and okay, so and and. So why, why, why do we have this uh, this symmetry group first, a uh, gauge group first of place? And, and that's very much coming from studying the, the symmetry of say hadrons or, uh, or other objects. And so, so that's already the, of course, obviously symmetry plays an important role in, in constructing standard model. And furthermore, magically that the single family Uh, how it's vanishing gauge anomaly. And this seems very miraculous, but first, first, when, when first you see the calculation that you have a various fermion content in chiral fermion content in, in, in the sun model, but, but the the anomaly, the part of the anomaly, is is cancelled. If you haven't haven't done so, that, that that calculation about the triangle anomaly, uh, I highly recommend you to do so by yourself. And, and but that bolsters our our confidence that the that that we are we are treating a light model because because um, because the cancellation looks so miraculous. Okay. But um, so that's one thing. Uh, I think there's another, and and that's um, and that that's more. Uh, but oh yeah, uh, someone have uh, raising a hand. So yeah, pr please please interrupt me and in, any time. Just just I think I think you can mute unmute yourself and and say anything yeah hi thank you so uh, i just wanted to ask so this is at every loop is it a loop by loop cancellation of the gauge anomaly or is it an so open? well I'm, I'm not going to explain about part of the anomaly actually but the but part of the anomaly comes only from the one loop there is no oh. contribution from the higher loop oh okay Okay. So so yeah. So it, it just just cancellation between the, the one loop one, one loop triangle that. That's... Oh, thanks. 
Thank you. Yeah. The triangle diagram is this to be, to be sure. Yeah, so, so only only one of the digits. Okay. Yeah. But the more the recent research uh more because a standard model is there and 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 the recent research is more uh, focused on, on the uh, another usage of the quantum anomaly, which is to constrain IR physics. of a uh, strongly coupled model. Okay, so the example, some example is some asymptotically free theory. Like, like to CD, but um, so you have so think about some RG flow that you have from UV to IR, and in the asymptotic, asymptotically free theory, the UV is strongly coupled. Oh, so, no, 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 the opposite, sorry. UV is weakly coupled. And IR is strongly coupled. That's the definition. Okay. So for the, like QCD in, in, in high energy, in the high energy scattering, you can use, well, uh, combined with the part of this distribution, but you can, you can, the core part of calculation is just the Feynman diagram part of the calculation of, of, of gauge theory. Um, however, the, in the IR, uh, the physics is strongly coupled and it, it is believed that the gauge gluons are confined, quarks are confined and, 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 and hadrons emerge. But that, that's very strongly coupled physics. So you cannot use the perturbative well, uh, method, like just like Feynman diagrams at, at this naive and okay, so so we need we need a new method and and, and the quantum anomaly is uh, is one, okay. Okay, so 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 generally. The GUV is this is the global symmetry, not not gauge symmetry. This is a global symmetry of the theory. Then this uh, okay, the IL theory also have its symmetry, but if, if when you have a when you have a RG flow between the two. These two groups, the symmetries, um, have have relationship, of course, and that is that you have some uh, homomorph homomorphism. In yeah, maybe maybe a homomorphism from UV UV group to to IL. A. Well, it, it's not necessarily uh, subjective or injective. Some some symmetry might decouple from the IL, or or the symmetry might in, emerge in the IL. But there's a there's a homomorphism. Okay, and then um, okay. then. Also, the each theory have associated the quantum anomaly. So let me call that the AUV and AIR. 
and there, there also is a re relationship between the, the two anomalies and and that is uh, uh, turns out to be the something called a pull book by star. So there's a there's a backward uh, map that induced from from this uh, homomorphism between the symmetries. That they, yeah, um, which is by star. So this this pull back five star is 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 fixed once once this phi and uh, this homomorphism is fixed. So yeah. Oh, yeah. But okay. So what can we what can we say from from this equation? Now now we are. We assume that the UV is weakly coupled. So, so some, we can do some calculation. And in particular, if for the part of the anomaly, it's just uh, you can you can do a triangle anomaly and triangle diagram. So so we assume that the, this A UV is computable. Because it's a UV quantity and the UV, UV is weak coupled. Okay. So, so assume that the you know you calculate and you know that A U V is not zero. For example. Okay. Just it, it, there is it, it's not cancel the I mean this is this is about the global symmetry, so it's okay that the Counter anomaly for global symmetry is not is not cancelled. But the theory itself is is well defined. But if you know if you know now that this this quantum anomaly for the global symmetry is not zero, the, this immediately tells that well this pullback map is is in a sense linear. So so this immediately tells A I R is non zero also. This is because of the the, the pull up map, map is linear in, in particular phi of zero is zero. Yeah. So this is well this equation, sorry, I should say I should say that this equation. Is an important equation, and this is called the Kafuft anomaly matching. Okay, so by we are Kafuft anomaly matching. For example, you can say that that if you have uh anomaly in UV, then the IR is also have, have non-zero anomaly. Okay, and, and this means that the IR theory, let's say deep IR theory, is not trivial. Here the trivial theory is just uh, having single vacuum. And that's it. No ex excitations. And and so if you if your theory have just just a single vacuum um, on any manifold, and and then you have some gap, then you have some gap in the spectrum. Then in deep deep IL, you only see that that vacuum. Okay. So 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 that's the that that's called the triviality gap. So. So this calculation, the calculation of anomaly, at least tells you that 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 uh, might tell you that the IR cannot be trivially gapped. That the, you you need you need some some degrees of freedom. Okay. 
Yeah, and fifth degrees of freedom uh, is not fixed. Um, still, typically there, there are many choices, but but at least you you know that there has to be something. And this is very low cost, typically, calculation, um, because, because the actual computation is inside this calculation of the UV anomaly, which is in, in, in the weekly couple regime. Okay, so you don't need the lattice calculation or like very fancy bootstrap on nothing. Um, so, so that, that, that's the power of, of the quantum anomaly combined with the fifth anomaly matching. So, yeah, so that's the motivation. And uh, until recently, people only used that part of the anomaly calculable from the fifth, uh, sorry, the triangle or, or like, like square, depending on dimension. The, just, just one loop diagrams. But to, um, to maximally use this kind of logic, it's, it's um, better to uh, also use other type of anomaly, like, so I want to use, want to use all symmetries. Including like discrete. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before I say 2010, people ignored most of the people ignored the, the discrete symmetry. I mean, there are notable ex exceptions, but, but but now now we uh, uh, many of us is caring about discrete symmetry and, and also other type of global so-called global anomalies and, and all anomalies. So this is a non part of the one. And so, uh, so the recent case in, in uh, 2010, that huge progress about this, about the anomaly for the discrete symmetry and, 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 and the non part of the balance. About, about this. How do you, How do you can, can I ask can something? I Yes, Sorry. please. Yes. How do you distinguish the perturbative and non perturbative anomalies? So the question is the, uh, so the definition of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the perturbative one is, is, is this. <laughs> and yeah. non perturbative one are everything yeah. else. Like, so, yeah. Well, D depending on well exact definition, but uh, for, for example, for, for all of the discrete groups, um, yeah, it, it's typically considered as a non part of the one. And, and also another example is the Witten's SU2 anomaly, the global anomaly. Yeah. Okay. An another, another, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, An another property of non perturbative anomaly is that the this is torsion. The non perturbative anomaly is torsion, which means that the uh, so A, this is anomaly, and but it is in valued in the N for some. Way. That's, uh, that's another. You, you, you usually the, the part of the anomaly is a num is an integer, but but the for the non part of the anomaly it's uh, more like more like a torsion part. Yeah. Thank you. So for, yeah, yeah, that's another distinction. Okay. 
So that's a motivation that, of why at least I am interested in the hoof. Okay. Yeah, I can emphasize that this, the, the, so this is to study the strongly coupled physics without, uh, without doing, doing the, I mean, the very tedious computation and more analytically. So that's the message. Uh, okay, are any, you going to question? focus on the global symmetries only? Sorry, would you say again? Uh, are, you, are you going to focus on global symmetry? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course you have a global, the count on money for global symmetry, that means that you cannot gauge the, the, that symmetry. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then. Yeah. And, and sorry, sorry, just another question. Yes. Uh, so, using this homomorphism, can I at least, uh, I mean, do something like uh, fix at least what kind of UV physics will flow to this kind of IR physics? Is, can I go the other way around? Can I fix uh, the UV physics using these homomorphisms? So, good question. And so, in, I mean, you can typically start start from from. Let me see. Yeah, start from the weakly coupled system, and it's. Yeah, you can you 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 can constrain, that that is from from this uh, that. That's not what you do typically in in the 4D or the asymptotic free theory, but in higher dimensional Q, super supersymmetric QFT, the 5D or 6D supersymmetric QFT, then actually the uh, typically the IR is weakly coupled and UV is strongly coupled, and in, in such cases we we do use this anomaly matching to constrain the the. Uh, the strongly coupled UV super conformal field theory. Yeah, so, so we also do that, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, um, and yeah, so, so the, the typical, uh, typical, I mean, the part of the anomaly is only in the even dimensions, even dimensional space time. So, but but this these uh, discrete symmetry anomaly or the non part of the anomaly can can exist in odd dimensions. So that's another advantage. And to understand those, uh, it, it's easier to start from lower, possibly the lower lower dimensional systems. So I want to start from the quantum mechanics. Okay, that's uh, the quantum anomaly. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, so this uh, quantum anomaly A. So, so what is the I mean algebra I mean characterization of this uh, quantum anomaly? Is it a group or can it be uh, something more general? So. Yes. So, a, okay. So, a, this anomaly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't explain. But the anomaly is um, typically resides in some kind of cohomology of like T plus one of G. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to to explain in the case of low, lower dimensions. But some some kind of cohomology, and this is this is some Abelian group. Yeah, and the pullback is 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 in the sense of the cohomology also. So that's where it it resides in. Yeah, so you can you can add the anomalies, 
and that's corresponding to the taking the tensor product of the, the theory. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you if you consider anomaly for the tensor product of two series, then then this is the addition. Yeah, that's algebraic structure. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so let me start from the quantum anomaly in quantum mechanics. Yeah, so here, so, so this is chapter two or section two. Yeah, okay, so here the I regard quantum mechanics as zero plus one dimensional QFT. It's like the QFT defined on that point. And yeah. And yeah, it, so it, it's it's convenient to start from lower dimensions because this, the the structure is more simple, is more simple. So, then let me start from basics of about, I mean, of uh, quantum mechanics. So, if you have a quantum mechanical system, you have Hilbert space. And you have some uh, quantum state. Okay. Yeah. But it's not, it's not quite uh, the quite a state in, in a sense that it's not uniquely fixed. Uh, I mean, it's not uniquely fixed by a physical uh, state of the of the quantum system. Rather, if this psi and another state with psi prime describes the same physical state. If psi and sorry. Prime, so psi prime is the same to psi by, by a phase. Okay. Uh, some, some alpha phase. And this is a real law. Yeah. I mean, here I already assumed these two are the unit, unit, unit vectors anyway. So, so, so there is a phase ambiguity, and, and the two states give, gives you the the, the same uh, same prob probability distribution of any any measurement. Okay, that's the that's the Borel rule. Um, so the transition, because the transition probability. From psi to phi is is this okay? So the, this kind of phase, why well, I assume the both two are unit, and this kind of phase doesn't matter, okay? It's a boring though. Okay, and 
Let's I was gonna uh sorry. Okay, so so it's not it's not what we uh sorry, I'm confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's not my my it, it it might not be a usual thing to do in the undergrad course, but let, let's take a let's take this uh, ambiguity seriously and define the projective space that P of H defined by S of H slash some equivalence. So S of H is the unit vectors. Unit. And, and this equivalence is that is by this phase. So, okay. So this space is not not the uh, not the space. Okay. But this space is the uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these elements of of this projective space and 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 the, the, the physical state. Okay. So so in a sense the, this is more more physical than the Hilbert space itself. Any question about, about this point? Okay. okay, so then let me move on to the Wigner's theorem. So Wigner's theorem is about, uh, so this is about saying that symmetry, I, I, will, I will state more precise statement, but, but this theorem is about this, stating that symmetry is realizable, realized as um, uh, uh, um Unitary or anti unitary operator on H. Okay, so that is a familiar statement, and you might you might think that, that that the that's the definition of the symmetry, but but actually in, in the in the beginner's viewpoint, it's not. This is a theorem. Okay, and and Wigner had. Uh, Different definition of symmetry rather than unitary. Okay, so so definition that symmetry transformation so that the the definition of symmetry by Wigner, by the way, this is like done in 1930 or something. The theorem is in 1931. So very stuff. Uh, there's a typo in the, in the direction of symmetry transformation. T acting on the quantum system is Is defined like is a 
the map from this projective space to itself. And this is by bijek, bijective, and preserves the probability. Okay. In in the math in, in, in equation, which means that the T of psi and and T well um let me see. Yeah. So let me let me define oh yeah. yeah. So I just use this T of T of psi goes to T of phi equals to t p of psi plus to phi. Okay. So that's the was the definition. And and of course you have a Hamiltonian, you also are demanded this com this commutes with the Hamiltonian. Okay. And yeah. And this so this is very intuitive definition that the, because each element of pH a corresponds to the physical state and and so the symmetry maps one 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 physical state to another and okay and, and that should preserve the, the transition probability okay then so this is definition then theorem <clears throat> This is big theorem, 1931. So, 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 of course, assume that you have you have the symmetry of transformation T. Then there's the exists a U T. This acts on Uh, on the Hilbert, Hilbert space and and U of psi, oh, so this is unitary or unitary or Anti linear map. Note that the, this T by itself doesn't have, I mean, in the definition, we don't have any linearity even about the symmetry. But, the, but theory tells you that for, first U is linear or anti linear. If if you if you don't remember what anti linear the anti unitary is, uh, you just ignore it. I'm I'm not going to talk talk about it. Um, but it's it's linear, basically linear operation, and so then the further it should be unitary, and and compatible with T, where the compatibility is that the U of psi, U T of psi equals to T of, yeah. this bracket, the bracket is, uh, this is in P H, which is the equivalence equivalence cross. Okay, and further this UT in so if dimension of table space is greater than two, or equal to two, 
when it's one, it's trivial. You can, you can find out what happens. When, if it's uh, greater than two, then ut is unique up to the overall phase. Obviously, this overall phase doesn't change anything. So, that's the case. Uh, okay. So, that's a theorem. Any question? So this U is more probably more familiar with uh, to most of you. Okay. But the reason why that I, I started from this figure theorem is that that to, to emphasize that this projective space and action on the projective space is more fundamental or more physical in a sense, directly related to, to, to the physics. And okay, then the, the familiar statement that symmetry is a unitary operation is the theorem. And I'm not going to prove this. Yeah, this theorem is, is actually not, not quite obvious so yeah like there's no linearity in the definition so so you have to first find argue that it's linear and that, that's not trivial i think yeah so the for the proof uh you can find it in, in for example weinberg's weinberg's qft text textbook Or there's some PDFs in, on the internet also, if you Google it. Okay, any question about the theorem? Yes, I have one small question. Please. Uh, about the statement that this projective space is encoding more physics than H itself. I wonder, uh, the fact that the vector space structure got spoiled, doesn't that somehow like messes with the superposition principle and all of those things that are very important. I mean, what happens with the vectors, the fact that the vector space structure of pH is not there anymore? How... So a good point. Um, of course, the superposition, it, it's very um, inconvenient to directly work with pH. So that's why almost everything is formalized on in the H. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's probably because that, that, that um, we are more familiar with linear algebra than projective algebra. <laughs> but I yeah, see. yeah, that, that, that's more, more like about, about uh, I mean, which, which basic math language we use. <laughs> and, okay. and we, at some point of the history, we determined to use the vector space. I think that's a reasonable choice. But then that, so we take that convenience uh, for the a bit of, of losing the connection to the, phys the real physics. Right, thanks. It's, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a, it's a mild, very mild marriage to, to pay, but, but then there is a consequence and that that's the what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, and why do I need this symmetry transformation to be a bijection? Um. Well, I think two is enough. One should. Yeah, well, I mean, we have not as of yeah. now used any bijection property of this map. I mean, 
the bijection property should come, I think, from from the pro the preservation of probability. If it's not bijection, then no yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, any any other question? And, and this obvious non-uniqueness is, is also important. It's going to be also important, okay. okay. So, so let us discuss some example of, of quantum states. So, so we should start from e, uh, easiest case, which is qubit. Okay, so here, 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 just uh, I talk about the Broca sphere. Okay. So think about a qubit, a uh, single qubit. Like zero. So. So H is spanned by zero and one over C. So this is C2. Okay. Then what is PH? Okay, so, so for any psi, so psi is like C1. Pick, pick arbitrary state in, in the Hilbert space, which is superposition of the two. Um, you can uh, face rotate. I mean, let's say this is unit. Then face rotate. So that. Uh, C1 is positive and linear, real and positive. Okay, so then this state, well, let me call, use the same, same symbol is, well, maybe, maybe I name this. So psi, theta, theta phi, theta. So you can always phase rotate C1 so that it's into, into the real positive real axis. Okay, so, so you can parameterize because it's unit, so you can parameterize use uh, like this. Okay. Here theta runs from zero to two. Pi. And pi runs from zero to, to, to pi. Okay. And note that uh, okay, so theta is pi. Okay. Pi. So this is. Is is just e to the i phi one. Okay, is uh, projectively identical to pi get pi phi prime with uh, uh, other other angle phi prime because it's it's just like different differ by just a phase. Okay, so. And also, also this, this is true for obviously too that this is easily theory for theory equals zero. So um, the phi angle doesn't matter. Okay. So in 
So you can, so this shows that um, pH is like this, theta pi, and this is like theta zero and pi. And, and lastly, pi and pi. So uh, this is confusing, sorry. This is, I, I should, I should just zero, zero. zero. Okay. The point is that if theta equals zero and pi, at the theta equals zero and the pi, that this pi, the, the pi angle collapses. And here, I mean the, the phi, and otherwise, otherwise the, this phi angle. So, uh, phi angle um, gives you the different states. Okay, so what's this? This is this is a uh, sphere. Okay, and called the brochosphere. And the theta and phi are usual polar coordinates. So you have a sphere. And say, so, so the theta is, is the polar angle. And phi is uh, this, this angle that I, I, I cannot pronounce and the north pole north pole is which north pole is zero i think and south pole is one okay or i mean if, if you know more about the uh, math it's it's also so can be thought as a CP one. Okay. So pH is a sphere. Okay, and and the probability. Uh, transition probability from theta one to theta two is is just a cosine theta one to the two. Here the theta one to is the angle between the two. States on the sphere. Okay. Any question? Okay, so what is the symmetry transformation? So symmetry, so Neglecting any any Hamiltonian, if you have a Hamiltonian zero, then what is the, what is what are the possible symmetry transformations? And that that some map from the sphere to sphere and preserves the angle. This could preserve the angle between the two any any two points of, of the on the sphere, then what is this? And that's that. That's just the rotation. Okay. So symmetric transformations of this on this this uh, qubit, a brothel sphere, single qubit, is forms. Uh, these are rotations. 
prohosphere. That's SOC. Okay. Oh, sorry. I should be precise. O3. Because there's a mirror reflection. That's also that's also symmetry. Okay. So all three is uh, like uh, SO three. There are two parts, the two, two connected component in O3, and one is SO3. Um, and the other is the D, G, and O3, where determinant is minus one. And and this part, so this part gives you the anti the anti unitary operation operators, and this part is unitary operations. Okay, so I, I'm not going to. Talk much talk, talk about the anti unitary thing. So C uh, two point three point C. Of the note uh, for 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 this uh, for this orientation reversing part, and and I focus on the SOC. Any question? Okay. So just so a then, uh, on the notation. So when you write the probability of the transition, uh, transition probability is cos squared theta one two. You just do you mean the, the theta, or just the generic angle between the two states? Yeah. So. Yeah, if you have two points on on the sphere, yes. Yeah, then then you can you define the angle between the two points. Ah, okay. So this is not the same theta as maybe in the diagram above. Oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe okay. it's confusing. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's like if you have a psi one here, and yes. So, so thanks for asking. Yeah. I'm not I'm not good at drawing, so I can I can create a beautiful picture, but okay. I just do two states, then 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 like this is the say that one's yeah. Say that one two. Is this clear? Yeah, yes. okay. Okay, thank you. But to cal calculate you uh, actually first, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you admit that the symmetry transformation is all three, then first, first move your one of the psi to, to some zero or somewhere, and then, then to this. But, yeah. Okay. And may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, or why the S2 equals to CP1? Uh, oh, why mean, S2 equals to CP1? Well, uh, I mean, if I remember that, it, it, it should be CP2 or something. Or, or is, is it It's CP1. It's CP1. Um, well, it depends on maybe, maybe there is a different notation. But I think the, the common, common. Yeah, usually it's called the CP one. That's complex complex dimension one. Okay. And 
Yeah. Well, you, probably you, 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 so CP1, CP1, this is just a notation. CP1 is P of C2. Okay, okay, thank you. I know, yeah. I know we are. Okay, so thank you. And, and why, why, why it's isomorphic to S2 is, is just, just I explained. Um, okay. Okay. Then, there I want to introduce the important concept concept of projective phase. Um. Okay. So projective phase. I have time until 2.30, 2 30, right? Um, I think it's, it's okay. It's a, good, it's a good pace, better than I was imagining, of projective phase of SO3. Okay, so take uh, Rz lambda it is a rotation around the z-axis. Let me call this. So this is this is z-axis. Then the rotation on the z-axis. So that obviously sends theta phi. The coordinate to theta phi plus lambda. Okay. So, what is so by Wigner theorem? There, there has to be some unitary operation that that is that realizes or compatible with this. Uh, this transformation u of r z lambda, and to to remember, I just copy and paste this state. So this is to compare. Okay, so this action is just on the graph sphere, just rotating the sphere. And that's like, doesn't, doesn't do anything for zero and rotate the, this part. Okay, so you can realize this one choice. is one zero zero and e to the other one. Okay. Or okay. Another choice is so, so as I said, that there, there's a phase ambiguity because the overall phase doesn't change the, the physical state. So, so another choice, which I call U, is this. This. Okay. Maybe lambda over two. Okay. And. Okay. So there are two choices. Well, of course, there are other choices, but I'll focus on the two, these two choices. Okay. And the second choice, how pros and cons against the first one. And pros is that the pro uh, is it's special. I mean, determinant is one. And 
and well, may, well, at this stage, it's not clear why it's a cross, but maybe you feel better. Um, and, and the clear cons is that u of rz 2 pi, the 2 pi rotation uh, going, going around the z axis and is, is so, 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 okay. and this one is, of course, the identity. Okay. Two pi rotation is, is the same as doing nothing. But, but from, from this, if you, if you use this, then it's minus one. I mean, minus, minus i2. This is the unique matrix. Okay, so, and, and it's not a contradiction because, because u is unique up to face. So, so the, the u corresponding to the identity symmetry transformation is some, some face and, and, and that, that can be one. But that's um, that's what happens when when what, what can happen when you are treating this kind of Wigner theorem. So more generally, uh, and for for the general angle, the lambda. If you if you write the multiplication rule for this this u, not not this u prime. Uh, if you multiply the two, you get almost the other person that prime. Okay, the multiplication rule is is this okay so where alpha lambda lambda prime is is zero when lambda here here lambda I, I take lambda and lambda prime are zero to two pi and lambda plus lambda prime is below two pi and pi lambda. I should I should say this is mod two pi. Okay, so this alpha is called called the projective space. Because the, the so for 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 a single transformation, the beginner's theorem says that it's just a, uh, there's a correspondence up to the face. Then if you have multiple transformation and and thinking about the, the composition or the multiplication of the symmetry transformations, then once once what the beginner's theorem uh, assures is only that the, this multiplication of symmetry transformation is preserved up to face. Okay. Okay. Well, not of course not that this this one is of course R R Z. Lambda prime is lambda. Yeah, here I also say that yeah, here I get two lambdas. Okay. 
So, so in this case, so we if if we only so if only care about if we so if we only care about the the R Z of lambda, just the rotation around around Z axis, then just use U prime R Z lambda, which is e to the I lambda over two U R Z lambda. Okay. okay. Then then this uh, no projective phase. So the projective phase sometimes is just a bad choice coming from just a bad, bad choice of, of, your, of your unitaries sometimes. However, uh, it's known, and uh, I, I, we are going to prove it, that the uh, you cannot Avoid what yeah, this avoid the projective phase for um, for the uh, the whole SOC. So, so for this U1 subgroup, you can you can read you can um, pick good uh, good representative for each each unitary, and so that the multiplication law is realized uh, exactly. However, you cannot do that. It's known that the, you cannot do that for the whole SSV. So such. So such projective phase called the non-trivial projective phase. Okay, and, and in the next section we, we will see, we will prove this. Okay, so okay. So for general. So, it's, so the more explicit statement is the for general um, R n lambda, where this is a rotation around the end vector. Then one choice is the U R n lambda is exponential of minus i lambda and dot sigma over two. Here the sigma, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, by the power matrices. Okay. okay and and this this u in, in in the case that n is the z axis. Then, then goes back to this. Yeah, so this is this is special. Yeah, that was. Okay. And this is of course usual usual SU two representation. Okay, but you cannot. Okay, then then there is a non zero non zero alpha, and and redefinition. U R N lambda uh, prime equals some. You, you can redefine each U by some by some phase. Cannot remove this projective phase. Okay. 
Any question? Okay, so then I, I finished the day one by commenting about uh, potential confusion. So, but SO3 versus SU2. And so usually, I guess this usually it said that the SU2 is what said. Uh, said the symmetry of qubit. And of course, the SU2 and this. And of course, the SU2 and the SO3 have a close relationship. And that is that SO3 is SU2 over Z of SU2. That's generated by, so this is identity and minus of identity, which is uh, Z2. So Z, Z is a, this is center of S2, which is Z2. Okay. And okay. so this. And this this one, this thing, is the usual expression of the SU2 action on, on, on this uh, qubit. Okay. But the point is that this this minus i2 does nothing. Nothing physically. Okay. Because because it's just just change the phase, the, the sign of the all the state at once, but that doesn't change any probably, and it doesn't change any, anything. Okay. I, I mean the physical state is is is, is the, the vector in the Hilbert space up to the phase rotation. Okay? So so the sign in front of it is actually not the physical entity. Okay. So. So SO3 is the faithful uh, symmetry of qubit. The faithful means that it doesn't have any anything extra. Okay. Then now, however, uh, so so sorry, yeah, but then then this projective phase. Exhibits uh, and well, project phase shows that the this SO three cannot be represented represented as linear. Um, so, mm, cannot be. Can, sorry, let me let me say it again. Okay. Cannot act on C two as linear representation. 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 Okay, and instead it is. It's the the multiplication is up to up to the phase. That's called the projective. This C two is uh, projective 
new presentation. Okay. Okay, and and this this property that 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 this uh, Hilbert space is a projective projective representation of symmetry, not not a linear one, is it is in a sense robust, as we will see, property of of the symmetry, and. And also the good analog of 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 quantum anomaly. Of fifty in in, in zero in, in Q. Okay, so therefore we regard this a projective phase, non-trivial projective phase is uh, as uh, the quantum anomaly. In in the quantum mechanics, which is regarded as a zero plus one dimensional QFT. Okay. So the message is that it's the, the, the symmetry, actual symmetry, faithful symmetry is SO3, but, but we usually use SU2 because it's more convenient. Okay. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's linearly represented by C2. Okay. But, but the, What's more close to the SO3? Um, sorry, what's more close to the physics itself is SO3. Okay. And this discrepancy between the, this uh, SO3 and this SO2 is the projective phase. And that, 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 that is uh, uh, the correct generalization of quantum anomaly into, into this uh, zero plus one dimensional case. Okay. Any question? about uh, today's lecture. The time is a bit over, but I, I think I can take, I hope I can take some questions if there is. Please go to the previous slide. Uh, where? Like. Uh, like this one, this one. Okay. And uh, you write the, uh, if uh, we only care about the RZ lambda, just we use this one, there is no projective phase. I yeah. probably missed that point. Can you explain that? Oh yeah, so so if you use, so this R prime is this, okay. Then, then it's obviously, obviously this is like, With this choice, it's this is obvious. You you just ignore this and I want to find maybe I can. Okay, but it, once once you use this, the this version, the you know, like a Pauli exponential power matrix, Pauli matrix. Then, then there's a uh, like, like with the, this phase. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because the difference is is this uh, half of the angle. Can uh, I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, well, suppose that you have a. I mean, here you have a. Uh, project your phase uh, for the composition of two symmetry operation. Yeah. Then uh, what happens to the uh, associative law? Uh, associative is the correct one? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Good, good, then, good uh, then good associative question. law must be modified or I mean something so, something must happen to yeah yeah so what happens to them good good question good question uh, yes so 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 I will talk about it tomorrow oh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. answer is that you are the matrices okay first of all so matrices um satisfies as associative rule so associate associativity so associativity of use um gives you the, some constraint uh to alpha okay so uh if you open the lecture note you can uh quickly see the the six point uh, two point six and if you open the the web website version that's the equation two point four three mm -hmm. oh, no 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 uh, no 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 that's not with the cycle so two point four zero That's the, the, this is a co-cycle condition. Yeah, that's a good, good question. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, so what you are saying is that projective phase uh, is not free, so it's, it's constrained. Uh, yes, it's constrained. Uh, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Is there any other question? So, so when you when you are free to add, I mean, multiply. I mean, basically, these ray representations, right? You are free to uh, multiply of uh, these group elements with a phase factor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, yes. I mean, it seems that at least naively, it seems that it would take me out of the SO3 group and land me in either the unitary group of some dimensions or the SU group of some dimension, right? If you multiply the group elements with some arbitrary phase factor. Yeah. So, uh, in the in the in this case, probably. Yeah. So so to if if you if you want something without without projective phase, then, then you have to go to the double cover of SO3, which is this. Yes. Right, right. That, that's what, what I'm saying, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, but doing so is more, more about our convenience. That, that's my point. And oh. not, 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 not about physics. Right, right. But, yeah, but the necessity for doing so is the physics. <laughs> right. It's complicated. Uh, uh, Yes. Okay, thanks. Any other question? Um, if not, let's thanks to speaker again for the very nice lecture. Thank you very much. Yeah.